up YouTube 2010 Toyota Corolla. Be showing you how to replace the rear shoes, rear hardware springs, and the wheel cylinders today. Anyways, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. So I'm going to make videos like this to make your life easier. Let's get started. Hopefully we have little interruptions, but I doubt it because every time I do a long video like this, someone interrupts me. First thing you want to do is if your drum won't come off, you can smack it a couple times with a hammer. If it still doesn't come off with a hammer, get you an 8x125 thread pitch bolt. And the head of this one is a 13 millimeter. That should pop it right off. Wiggle it off. Go ahead and dump your drum to dust because we're reusing this drum because it doesn't look bad. All right. Now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. The wheel cylinder is leaking. That's why I'm replacing it. I always pull back the boots. There's a bunch of moisture in there. That means it's starting to seep. So what I'll do is I'll clean everything up before I pull everything. All right. Now your little horseshoe clip, I like to call it, because it's shaped like a horseshoe. I'll always extract before I pull. It's on the front side. Let's get it spread out a little bit. Trap yourself like that on your shoe. Now I got new ones with my brake shoes, but if you didn't, hold on to it. Right there. All right. Sit there and get this bottom spring off. Don't matter if you mess the spring up because I'm getting new ones anyways. pop this top spring out like that now we're going to take our hold down springs off this guy right here you can buy these hardware tools pretty much anywhere now if you're new to this do not take apart both sides until you learn that we have a reference side if you don't remember where things go. Grab your adjuster. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this all the way out. It's going to be counterclockwise, or not counterclockwise, the other way. Take it out. You have to take this off to change the spring. Note the position of it. It's a good time to clean it. Thread it all the way in. Because these new shoes are going to be thicker. And it's also going to be easier to put the spring on with the thread it all the way in. Just kind of set that to the side for now. Discard that. Discard this. Alright. Now, you pop your other shoe off there. Take this shoe off. Now we're going to take our new shoe. 
Notice the pin comes in it already. We're going to transfer over this spring. Glass grips work good for this. Discard that old spring. We're changing the spring. Hook her on right there, just like that. Hook it back down. Go ahead and discard that. Without dropping everything, now I'm going to clean up the backing plate real good and all the other components. Take your old pins out. Discard those. All right, now, I'm gonna, while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and change this wheel cylinder. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter on the bolts that hold it down. We're gonna loosen the brake line. It's a 10 millimeter also. Cylinders on this, both left and right are the same. Part number, they're clocked the same. Some cars are different. Some cars have a left and right one. This one don't. Go ahead and disregard that. Pop your little rubber boot out. Now, before I put any bolts in, I like to get my brake line started. If you can turn it all the way in with your fingers till it stops, that's even better. Less wrenching. Now we're going to grab our nuts, our bolts, whatever you want to call it. Nuts and bolts. That's all I deal with all day long. Brake fluid. Tighten that down. Being careful, they're very small, they will break. Alright. Now I'm going to finish tightening my brake line. Once it stops, just give it another quarter turn. Now, while we're waiting, we can go ahead and crack our bleeder screw open couple turns, let gravity bleed out, and that's all you got to do. You will not have to have an assistant for this. Once it starts stripping real good, it's let out. Disregard the shoes, unless there's a core on them, which in this case there's not. All right, now, clean some of that brake fluid off. Uh, brake cleaner. What I like to do is put some high temperature grease on the contact points. That way they eliminate any squeaking. All the contact points where the shoes make contact at. Little cylinders too. Kind of rub it in. that all right now let me go grab a rag so I can wipe this grease off my hands y'all should have had one already anyways but I'm um, trying to be as prepared as I can before I do these videos but it happens all right now we're gonna take our new shoe 
And if the hole, like I was afraid of, it was like that on the other side, take a drill bit. A lot of these shoes are made in China. Ream that hole out a little bit. The drill bit. Until it slides in nice and smooth. A little bit more. I'll do both the front and back side. Kind of working around it. A little bit more. You want it to be nice and loose because you don't want the e-brake sticking. That's better. We're good now. Go ahead and take the clip. Now what works really good for this is vice grips. Spread them out a little bit. Needle nose vice grips anyways. Stretch it over. Then bend it in, just like that. All right. Now, the fun part. It's going to be the hardest part of this job, y'all. Put your spring in. Stretch it over. Okay, we're dripping. Let's go ahead and close that bleeder screw. Just a little snug. Throw a little dust boot back on. Just like that. Alright. Now, grab our other shoe. Don't matter which way that faces, it's the same on both ways. I'm gonna just snag my glove there. Put that in there. Now, close attention. See I'm using this shoe as our tool, like that. See your shoes, nice and flush in the middle of the wheel cylinder. Now I'll put the bottom spring on. Flip it up under the back side there. Alright. Now we're gonna put our hold downs on.
grab me another one. Making sure the dome part is facing outwards. That way it seeps into the spring. Twist it until it's seated like that. Same on the other side. Find the hole here. Right there. Am I actually going to get through this video without someone bugging me? Holy crap. Alright, make sure it's seated in those little notches. Now, grab your drum. Now if you're replacing your drums, make sure you get some high quality ones because a lot of these Chinese drums, see how loose that is? They are warped out of the box. These are not, I usually just leave them alone if they're not sworn or they're dug into. I don't mess with them. I just use the old ones. I have a lot better success with that. Just grab a flathead screwdriver. Now you can do this in the back side too. There's a little hole back there. I just go ahead and do it from the front. Upwards. Darn it. It's trying to come out on me. Oh man, it did. Crap. Well, that's what happens. Have to fix that. We're going to get this done. Of course, this would happen to me on this side, the side I'm doing the video on. No problems on the other side. Trying to pick these things up. Dang near impossible when it falls on the floor. All right. You little crap, Ola, you. Yeah, that should be clicking whenever you're turning that adjuster and that wouldn't click and that's what made me notice something was off. I think it got bent. Get on there. I'm going to pull this off, y'all. from the other way. See how smooth I am. Uh, 
Let's see how smooth I am. playing with me just on the front side. Get in there. Pull. Alright. Okay. Try this again. Ah, oh, that's an old piece. I'm not worried about that. Now you don't have to change your hardware, y'all. I'm just doing it because the car has a, a lot of miles on it, and springs do get weak over time, and they do stretch. It's just up to you. All right, let's try this again. The technical difficulties here. You're going to defeat me, Carl. All right. Now. That's better. Wind it out a little bit. You take your drum. Still got a good bit to go. Now, like I said, you can do this from the back side, that hole right there. But I just find it easier to do it this way. You hear it clicking now? It wasn't clicking before because that little arm back there was not making contact. Because that was popping out. All right, let's see if that's sufficient. Make sure everything's seated, nice and flush. We're almost there, I can feel it dragging. You want it just to where the shoes are making slight contact with the drum. And I can feel it dragging. See how it'll turn and then stop? That's perfect. Don't want to overdo it because you'll overheat your shoes and you'll overheat your drum. Then you'll be redoing the whole brake job over again. And as you notice, these are not fun to do. And I've been doing this for 25 years and I still hate doing drum brakes. So anyway, sorry about the technical difficulties. It happens. We got through it though. Anyways, it's your bled out too as well. You ain't got to worry about having an assistant. I promise you, your pedal will be fine if you let it gravity leave for a couple minutes. Anyways, y'all subscribe. Y'all have a good day. Check like. Peace out, YouTube.